Hey, I'm Anna and I'm an Ableton certified trainer. In this video, we're going to create a music idea by exploring some of Live 11's new features. For that, I called my friend and fellow certified trainer, Simone Tanda. Let's get started. I want to provide Anna with a pop song structure based around a couple of simple chord progressions. So let's create a MIDI clip. And I'm sure you'll notice a brand new clip detailed view here, where you do have access to the old usual features, as well as a brand new menu dedicated for follow action and launch activities. There are three tabs to give you access to the main parameters of a clip, note, envelope, and note expression. Within this last tab, there are several different aspects of MPE sounds, MIDI polyphonic expressive devices that you can modify. And although MPE is not entirely necessary for this demonstration, let's use this sound. And now let's move back to our MIDI editor. Okay, the main feature I want to discuss with you guys is scale. You can activate that by pressing this icon in the bottom left corner, and you can see how the MIDI editor now displays exactly which note you're supposed to play to be part of the C MIDI scale that we have selected. It's exactly like Bush, where it's easy to identify the fundamental note and all the other pitches. If you want to decide for the different scale, just simply click on this menu, and now we got C minor. You can see how the intervals on the editor change accordingly. And now we have a scale feature, which is brand new, that gives us the option to visualize only the notes that are part of the selected scale, which can be easily used to draw a chord progression. You see now how the third note is called E flat, and now simply by copying and moving around my chords, I'm pretty sure that what I've created it all sounds organic within the same scale. Nothing too fancy, but it works. Okay, now let's deactivate the scale option. And I would like to move just one note simply out of the scale. For example, this B flat to B. And you can see how the B note now is displayed when the scale is active. Interestingly, we can now determine the behavior of the accidentals. So for example, let's lower this D to a D flat. You can see how it's notated as a C-sharp. Let's go on the piano roll, right-click, and select flat instead of sharp. Or you can select both the options. Let's quickly finish this chord progression. And here is the verse. I've created a chord progression for the chorus as well, which is pretty much the same chord sequence. Everything is pitched an octave higher than, uh, than the verse, and here we have the effect. The biggest change here is determined by the little note eco plugin, which is essentially a delay for MIDI, which I would like to discuss more in further videos. For now, let's listen the chord progression in context with the music and let's send the material to Anna. Okay, so I received the chords and the melodies from Simone. Let's take a look. So the CPU is going a bit hot. So let's check out how much CPU each track are consuming. In session view, we have now the CPU load meter show height button. 
we can also now toggle between average and current CPU metering. Since I enabled the CPU meter section, now I'm able to see how much CPU each tracks are consuming. And in regards to that, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze these tracks to avoid audio dropouts while I'm recording on a low buffer size to avoid input latency. Now we're gonna dive into another new feature of Live 11, which are take lanes. This will enable us to record different takes of audio and then as a result to be able to comp from them. So first we're gonna right click, control click on the track and then choose from the contextual menu, take lanes. Once that's enabled, then we're gonna create a loop where we'd like to record the different takes to. Let's enable the track and get started with recording. Closure. I wish I would have anything to say to you. Closure. So as we can see while we're looping the section of the song and keep on recording, all the new recordings, the different versions of audio are getting recorded to a new take lane. Okay, once we are done with recording, in order to be able to listen through the different takes, all we need to do is enable the audition button on the different take lanes. Once we like a part of one of the take lanes and we like it to be a permanent member of the arrangement, all we need to do is select that section and then hit enter and it will move it up to the main take lane. Also, if we'd like to have some fades created automatically on the clip edges, we can just go to Preferences and enable it. Let's quickly go through the other parts of the vocal takes. I wish I would have anything to say to you. I wish I would have anything to say to you. I wish I would have anything to say to you. Once we have chosen the next preferred section of a take lane, now we're going to use a different technique to move it up to the main take. We're going to right click or control click on the clip and then we're going to choose draw mode from the contextual menu. And from that point, whatever we're going to select with the pencil, is gonna automatically move up to the main take. And as we can see, the fades are created now automatically since we have enabled it earlier. We can also hide the take lanes by control click or right click on the track and then choosing that option. They will not get deleted. We can open them back up anytime we want them again. We hope you enjoyed the video guys and looking forward to Live 11.